Hey, I'm Gordon, and I have a free Gamma Compressor DCTL for you. So this one's based on the work of the ASUS Virtual Working Group on Gamut Mapping and has been implemented into ASUS 1.3 as the reference Gamut Compression. And what I've done is essentially taking that, but instead of only having it work in ASUS, I have extended it to many, many more different color spaces, or to be more precise, transfer functions, also known as gammas, which is not at all confusing. But I've done that and also added a few features, so let's head over to Resolve and see how it works. So I have this project set up with a very saturated image. And if you look at it without color management, you can see that in this red light, there are some quite odd yellowish colors that uh, well, are not supposed to be there, but we'll have to do something about them. So as for the project setup itself, I am doing node-based color management, going from Blackmagic uh, Film Gen 5, B-Raw, into Domitio Ride Commit Intermediate, which is my preferred working space, and at the very end, on the timeline level, I'm going from Domitio Ride Commit Intermediate to Rex09 Gamma 24. And note that I am not using the built-in gamut mapping or saturation compression, as well, while it does help a bit, it isn't doing the job as well as it could be. And this is where the wonderful, wonderful Gamut Compressor DCTL comes in. So as soon as I put it onto the group post clip, and this should be the very last node before your ODT, your output device transform, or the color space transform effect that brings you from your working space to your display space. So if I enable it, you can see right away quite improvement there. Well, we can't see them as well anymore, though we could do better. If we start taking a look at the customizability of this DCTL, we can see that we have some options on top to change how the compression is working, including free limit sliders for cyan, magenta, and yellow, fresh shield sliders for the same ones, and an overall roll off. And down below, we have a bypass one to just bypass the whole DCTL. Then one to show the changes, which uh, helps you see what areas and how much the DCTL is affecting. Then show curves, which shows the underlying curves and what the DCTL is doing precisely. And finally, an option to invert the whole thing, which whew, looks very bad. Why would anyone do that? Well, there are certain use cases where you would have a sandwich of these which in total, one is inverted, the other one is not. The total of these will result in no change, but now in between you can do certain things. But this video is not about that special use case. So essentially, if we start taking a look at the curves and what they're doing, then, uh, well, the limit one is moving the end of the curve between being linear, meaning there's no change, and going down to this horizontal line in the middle. And what this line represents is the edge of the gamut. Then the threshold ones control how far into your existing gamut the compression goes. So if we put it all the way up to one, well, it isn't much of a curve, it's more of a corner. But if we bring it down all the way and the minimum is 0.4, so 40% into your, um, well, 40%, 60% into your gamut from the edge, 40% from the middle, then, um, well, the curve starts way, way sooner and is much more shallow. And then we have the roll-off, which just controls the overall smoothness of the curves. So with these things, you can start testing out what works better, what doesn't work as well, just see how this tool reacts to your footage, or well, how your footage reacts to this tool. And do keep in mind, the default values are the ones provided by the ACES working group. So this should be a good starting point. But if you want a very, very smooth roll-off, you can bring the thresholds all the way down. Remember, this means that the curve starts from as low as it can, and, well, if we look at this result, I'd say it's quite a bit better than what we started off with, which we can see if I hit reload. Yeah, I'd say that's an improvement. And then we can play 
with the limits, which uh, will also somewhat change the hue of the resulting image. So you can kind of affect how it looks even more artistically, not just use this tool as a technical fix. Well, there we go. So the download link is down below for free. And if you have any feedback, I'd love to hear that in the comments section, or you can email me at support.carh.com. So see you next time.